Well, Christmas came early. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be installing a lift kit from Iron Rock Off-Road on my 2003 Jeep Liberty, also known as the KJ. So follow along on the video. We'll show you installing this lift kit on the KJ. Also, we added a little bonus lift on ours on this install using a little secret weapon some of you liberty guys already know this trick but if you don't follow along and we'll show you how to install the iron rock off-road kit and a little bonus lift to go along with it after the install we'll give you our conclusion on the install and the things we liked and didn't like during the install First, we brought the Jeep into the garage and we put it on four jack stands under the unibody, lifting the Jeep up and suspending the suspension. Then we opened the hood. We disconnected the air box on the passenger side, which is super easy. You just take the top air cleaner off take the air cleaner out and the box just pops out on some on three grommets that pop out and that's easy to access the front strut on the passenger side the driver's side is a little bit trickier we have to remove the battery remove the battery tray on the driver's side then you're able to use um, a 10 millimeter and pull that battery tray out and we can access the bolts on the front suspension on the driver's side of the struts now we go back under the jeep and we disconnect the sway bar then we disconnect the tie rod ends from there we'll loosen the bolt that holds the clevis onto the strut to the lower control. I'm just working it back and forth here. Try to free up the threads a little. From there, we'll remove the clamping bolt that holds the clevis to the strut. Like I said before, we have the suspension suspended. So during the process of lifting or removing the bolts from the struts, we uh, actually lifted it up using the jack so you can put a load underneath the suspension. Well, now that we got the tie rod end off, the upper ball joint we remove the clevis bolt and we loosen but not remove the lower clevis bolt bolt to the lower control arm at this time we can remove the strut from the vehicle now that we got the four upper bolts off on the body of the top of the strut we will lower this guy, ooh, what's happening? Brake line is tight. I do not like that. I'll go a little bit, there we go.
Now it's time for the secret sauce. This strut shock, this shock tower is actually from a KK. The secret weapon is, but this mod will gain you one inch. So if you put a KK um, shock assembly in, you gain about one inch. This is the KK is 22 and a half long and the is 21 and a half long. So by putting this shock assembly in the KJ, we gain one inch. Pretty cool mod. A lot of you uh, KJ owners already know that mod, but another option you can do too, if you just want to gain a half an inch, you can take the clevis from this one and put it on the bottom of this guy. So you can just gain one inch. That's uh, originally what I was gonna do, but then I noticed how much taller that shock assembly is. And the bolt patterns look to be the same-ish. However you measure that. I guess I could measure it. Five and an eighth. Five and an eighth. <laughs> okay. So we'll clean this guy up, give it a bath, you know, give it a little touch up. We got to disassemble it because you can't put the whole assembly in. I tried already. It doesn't work that way. So let's disassemble this, uh, paint it up, and throw it back in. By the way, I picked this up at Junkyard for 30 bucks. Cheap little lift, huh? Well, we got a special visitor or helper. Are you helping, bud? This time we'll take the strut fixture and we will uh, bring it to the bench. We'll bring it to the bench. This is where we have to install the lift kit from Iron Rock, that spacer. So we'll have to put the spacer on. We'll have to um, mock up. The bolts, we have to actually cut off the top of the strut. So throw the bolts onto the top of the old strut. We will chop them off with a cutoff wheel because we got to lower the studs on the strut to fit the new lift. We have the spacer installed. Now we can go and uh, just repeat what we just did by taking everything out. We will grab the strut and the new lift spacer and we'll put it back into the Jeep. We'll do repeat the process by installing it with just the strut and the lift. This uh, can be quite difficult, but with some uh, massaging pry bars and maybe a spring compressor, you can get that uh, strut back into the Jeep. From there, you can install the upper ball joint and put the tie rod back on and the sway bar links. That was a little insane to do. I had to, um, yeah, use like three people, a ratchet strap. Uh, we got it all buttoned up now, but we had to use a ratchet strap and a lot of muscle to get that lower clevis bolt in because adding that spacer and doing the KK uh, strut yeah, that was a little much to try to get that lower bolt in that clevis. But we got her in. I don't think we would have that much trouble if we didn't do the KK swap. If we would have just stuck with the KJ struts, I'm pretty sure the Iron Rock lift would go right in. But, you know, we're stretching the envelope a little. So let's go do that other side. Now we'll move to the rear. We have the Jeep suspended still. We'll put the jack on the back of the axle 
and lift the back axle up a little bit to put a load on the rear axle. We'll remove the rear shocks on the vehicle. By removing the shocks on the vehicle, we now we can remove the coil springs out of the Jeep. We'll remove the coil springs on each side. Therefore, we can now install the spacers that Iron Rock gives you for the lift kit on the bottom of the coils. The spacers from Iron Rock will go in there now. So let's do that. Now that we have the coil spacers in, we can install the new shocks that Iron Rock gives you during this kit, during for this install. Now we have the coil spacers installed. We have the new shocks installed. We can move to the lower control arms. Here we will remove the sway bar. Oh, I'm gonna get this snake out of here. What? I gotta get this snake out of here. There's a, yeah, look at this big wild snake. Whoa, it's a big snake. We got the wild snake out of the Liberty. Woo! Now, after removing the sway bar, we can remove the lower control arms on the Liberty. Well, I don't know if this is true for all models of the Liberty, but I actually had to take the shock bolt off on the bottom again and move the shock out of the way because I couldn't get the lower control arm bolt off. The lower control arm bolts, on this guy at least, were pretty rusty, so I had to use some fire. And then I went and picked up this guy. So I've been battling with this 3 8 drive to pull these bolts off in here. So I went to Harbor Freight and went and got a half inch drive. And with a little bit of fire and the half inch drive, she went out like butter. I gotta show you guys a comparison here between the old lower control arm and the new one. Woo, and adjustable. And we got went with the flex joint on greasable flex joint. And then the solid bushing on this end. Good thing we're replacing these because look at that guy. Rotted through both sides. We'll install the lower control arm. The adjustable end goes towards the uniframe. Now that we got the lower control arms installed, we can move to the upper control arm. Got the lower control arms in. We got the bolts in, we haven't tightened them yet. And now we'll work on the upper control. The upper control arm is uh, an A-arm design. Now we can remove that upper A-arm. First, we have to get the jack underneath the middle of the rear end near, near the drive shaft so we can keep that pinion angle. Connects the A-arm to the unibody. We remove those two bolts. On the rear end, where the A-arm connects, there's actually three bolts on that A-arm that hold a bracket on. So we don't actually have to take the ball joint off the A-arm, holding that bracket on onto the ball joint of that A-arm. A little hard to video down here, but first off, we got to take this balancer off the rear end here. So we'll do that. And then we can get access to that top ball joint on that, you know, upper control A-arm jobber. Dang, we took that uh, weight off, that counterweight. I think we just gained, you know, 20 pounds of race weight by taking this off. Those three bolts are glued in there, so you'll have to use some heat up around those three bolts on the rear end to remove those three bolts. From there, we have the old A-arm assembly removed. Oh, we got the boomerang out. There's the boomerang. 
Oh, yeah. Boomerang. Oh, yeah. Wow. That puppy shot. A bad. That ball joint is. Here's a comparison of the old upper control arm and the new one. These guys are shot too. The old uh, flex joints and the solid adjustment on that A arm or that upper control arm is going to be quite the upgrade. DOG. Old A arm removed. We can go ahead and install the new bracket for the new A arm from Iron Rock. Iron Rock provides a new bracket that will mount onto your rear end. We'll install that bracket. Now we'll, ins we'll install the new A arm from Iron Rock on the vehicle. Now that we got the lower control arms installed, the upper control arm, which is the A arm, and we can reassemble the factory sway bar and we can lower the vehicle down and now we are complete. Now for my final thoughts on the install. I love the look of it. That's my final conclusion. The Jeep has transformed into something beautiful. The lift on the Jeep makes the look of the Liberty look aggressive and so much better. It should have looked like that off the assembly line, like a normal Jeep. The thing would be a beast. But for the install, the struts. Um, I recommend just doing the normal uh, factory struts for the KJ. Um, I did the KK install with the extra lift on those struts along with the iron rock was quite difficult. I had to use ratchet straps and spring compressors and don't do that. Just use the factory KJ struts and you will be all right installing this lift. For the rear, if it wasn't for rusty bolts, I believe the install on the rear would have gone way smoother. But I spent so much time trying to remove the lower, con well, first the shock, the lower shock bolts were nearly impossible to get off. I spent 45 minutes probably on one bolt just trying to remove it. If it wasn't for the rusty bolts, the rear install would have gone super smooth. The spacer under the coils uh, maybe being a little wonky and it doesn't sit on the hat of the rear axle very well. So I'm not sure if that's gonna remove, or I mean spin around or move while we're off-roading. But if it does, or if you guys have any tips on that, let me know below. But in the future videos, I might remove that spacer and just put a taller coil under there. Or before that, probably just weld that spacer to the, or tack weld that spacer to the hat of the axle to keep it from spinning. Overall, Iron Rock off-road products are legit. The flex joints we put in there are gonna be a game changer. The, the thickness of the material that they build their suspension lifts out of 
is top notch. Again, thanks for watching and until next time.